biggest macroeconomic event of the week is probably due on Sunday the 4th of June, when the Organisation of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC for short, and 10 other major oil producers hold their latest meeting. OPEC Plus, as the combined grouping is known, caught traders on the hop back in April with a production cut of around 1.2 million barrels of oil a day, and that prompted a spike in the price of crude. However, oil has since sagged again, amid near-term concern over the slow place of China's post-lockdown economic recovery, and indeed a possible global recession, let alone long-term public pressure for attainment of the COP27 net zero targets by 2050. Saudi Arabia is, in effect, the leader of OPEC, and Russia the most powerful of the non-OPEC members within OPEC+. Riyadh has its welfare and infrastructure programs to pay for, and Moscow needs oil and gas revenues for similar schemes, plus the ongoing conflict it started in Ukraine. Neither of these powerful um, partners is likely to want oil prices to go much lower, even if a sustained oil price surge would probably be one of the last things that consumers, central bankers and politicians in the West would want to see because of the possible implications for inflation. On the home front, there's a brief list of scheduled trading updates, results and annual general meetings, but it may be no less informative for that. Firms which may be worthy of further research include the following, although do please note that some of these dates could yet be subject to change. Serious real estate on Monday the 5th of June, Hemring, Page Group, Speedy Hire, Gooch and House Go and N Brown on the 6th, Ramsden's on the 7th, M&G, Wizz Air, First Group and Crest Nicholson on the 8th, and Fuller Smith and Turner will round out the week on Friday the 9th of June. For the company which could really cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is British American Tobacco. The FTSE 100 member is due to report a second quarter trading update on Tuesday the 6th, ahead of the release of formal first half results on the 26th of July. Now the shares have gone from the top left of the chart to the bottom right with barely a break over the past year and have lost a quarter of their value over that period as a result. Ongoing regulatory pushback against smoking and indeed menthol and flavoured alternatives in America and the company's ability to create new income streams with its next generation products at NGPs remain long-standing issues that could be weighing on sentiment. In addition, the company has just been fined $635 million by the US Department of Justice for sanctions busting. It's not a particularly pretty picture, and new chief executive today in Morocco, who had been chief financial officer since summer 2018 until his appointment upon the uh, disappearance of uh, his predecessor Jack Bowles, must now put the North Korean fiasco behind the company, improve momentum in next generation products, and entrench BAT's competitive position in tobacco, so it can keep generating cash, pay fat dividends, decrease borrowings, and in time perhaps restart share buybacks. Now, all these issues will be under scrutiny as Mr. Morocco oversees the second quarter update, which will be benchmarked against the full year guidance for 2023 given by Mr. Jack Bowles, his predecessor, alongside the 2022 full year results back in February. Now, that guidance had four key parts. The first was organic sales growth, excluding the withdrawal from Russia and Belarus and BAT is targeting 3-5% to growth on a constant currency basis for this year. On a stated basis, analysts are looking for a 5% increase to £29.1 billion for 2023. The second part was mid-single-digit percentage growth in earnings per share on a constant currency basis. The current analyst consensus for the entire year is for adjusted EPS of 399 pence, up 7% year-on-year. Key factors will include stick volumes, pricing and mix, ongoing cost benefits from Project Quantum, changes in the losses of next generation products, which came in at £400 million last year, and how performance in America is expected to be more second half weighted than usual. The third number is ongoing debt reduction thanks to strong cash flow. BAT ended 2022 with net debt of £39 billion, down from a peak of nearly £47 billion. And the fourth figure will be payment of dividends worth 57.72 pence each in May, August, November and next February, for a total of 230.9 pence with regard to fiscal 2022. BAT has, however, paused its share buyback after the completion of 2022's £2 billion programme, as management again preferred to focus on paying down debt. The good news for shareholders in BAT is that free cash flow after interest, tax and capital investment still covers the annual dividend quite handily, and the forecast dividend yield is some 9% for this year, based on analyst consensus forecasts of an increase of 243 pence a share, for 2023. 
More strategically, analysts and shows will look for comment on the prospect of new re- legislation and regulation in America, where the Food and Drug Administration continues to investigate menthol and flavoured cigarettes. Hardened fans of BAT's cash flow will also be watching the firm's progress in next generation products, where sales are expected to grow by nearly a quarter this year to three and a half billion pounds. Hope that you and your families are on good health and good spirits. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.